All right, guys, welcome back from the break. Um, we're going to be working with um, examples uh, using our valence electron and ion charge information. So um, I'm not going to do the whole worksheet with you guys. You guys are going to be working on this in class also. But I wanted to run through a couple of examples. The first thing that I want to show you is that each of the substances in each block are repeated in the next block. So you can see that we have sodium and fluorine, sodium and phosphorus. And then in the next block, those are the first two. And then in the last block, you have that as well. So we are only going to be doing the first and second block. We'll be finishing with the third block the next time that we meet. So I'm going to scroll back up here. We're going to look at the first block together. And the examples that we're going to be doing are sodium and fluorine, magnesium and chlorine, and sodium and phosphorus. So we're going to be doing this one, we're going to be doing this one, and we're going to be doing this one together. And so again, we'll follow here from this first block to the next block with those same substances. So the first thing that we need to remember in this first block is asking us what we just did in the first part of the lecture um, before the break. So we're going to look at valence electrons, and then as a result of valence electrons, what charge is that atom going to make when it becomes an ion? So if sodium is in group 1, we know that it has one valence electron, and fluorine is in group 17 or group 7a, and so it has seven valence electrons. So we need to go back to our questions that we ask ourselves. And we say, if I only have one valence electron, is it easier to lose that one or is it easier to gain seven? Sodium would say it's easier to lose one. So its charge number is going to be one. And then remember, it's opposite math. So if I remove electrons, I'm left positive. Now, fluorine is on the other side of the periodic table, really, really, really close to the noble gases. So it has seven valence electrons. And so I'm going to ask myself again, is it easier to lose seven or get rid of seven valence electrons, or is it easier to gain one electron? So even though it has seven valence electrons, fluorine would say, and that it's easier to gain one more to get to eight. So my charge number is the same, but in this case, I'm going to be adding electrons. So opposite math says I'm left with a negative charge. So just remember from our previous conversation, it's opposite math. If I'm subtracting electrons, I'm left positive. If I'm adding electrons, I'm left negative because it's about who's winning in the end. So if we look at our next example, we're going to look at magnesium and chlorine. Magnesium is in group two, so it's going to have two valence electrons. Chlorine is actually in the same group as fluorine, and so they have seven together. So when we ask ourselves what charge behavior we're going to have, we're going to ask ourselves the same question again. Is it easier to lose two, or is it easier to gain six? Magnesium would say that it's easier to lose two and that would leave it with a positive charge. For chlorine, it's in the same boat as fluorine. It already has seven, it's one away from eight, so it's much, much easier to gain that last one and increase its electrons by one, which would leave it negative. So it's adding an extra electron to get to eight, and so it would leave it as negatively charged. So then we're going to go down to our last example here with sodium and phosphorus. Sodium we've already dealt with. It's in group one, so it has one valence electron. Phosphorus, though, is in group five. So it has five valence, or 15, or 5A. So it has five valence electrons. So we're going to ask ourselves again, which is easier? Sodium is going to say that it's easier to get rid of one electron. So if I subtract that electron, I'm left positive. Phosphorus would say, phosphorus is really close to being in the middle, but it's just over to the other side. And so phosphorus would say that it's easier 
to gain three electrons. And so if I'm adding three electrons, I'm left with a negative charge. So in terms of practicing valence electrons to charge, remember that we're asking ourselves the same question over and over and over again, which is easier to do. Each of those elements is gonna have an easier path. So whatever is easiest to do to get to eight, whether that's losing a couple of electrons or gaining a couple of electrons, however it can get to eight, that's what it's gonna do. So we've practiced this quite a lot. Now we're going to start applying that. So we just said that sodium and fluorine is going to, sodium is gonna create a one plus charge, fluorine is gonna create a one minus charge. So when I come down to this next block, the question that I'm gonna be asked is how many of each of them am I going to need to balance the charge. So this is a new piece of information. So when we talk about balancing charges, this new word balance over here means something different than when we were balancing equations. Balance now means equal but opposite. And what that means is that we have to have an equal number of positives and an equal number of negatives for both. So to carry my information down from the previous exercise, I am going to carry down that sodium is going to bring a one plus charge and fluorine is going to bring a one minus charge. So when I carry that down here to my next block, I'm going to write it like this. Sodium is going to bring the one plus. Actually, I'm going to write that a different way so that it doesn't interfere with the spacing. So sodium is going to bring the plus and fluorine is going to bring the minus. It's not where they should be, but we're going to work with it. So if I have one plus, let me try one other thing really quick to see if that works a little bit better. Let me try sodium bringing the one plus and fluorine bringing the one minus. Let's do it like that. And that way it won't change the spacing. Okay. So the question that I need to ask myself here takes me back over to the right side where I defined balance. Balance means equal but opposite. So my number that goes with positives has to equal my number that goes with negatives. So I look at sodium and fluorine and I look at the numbers that they brought. Sodium is a one in the plus category and fluorine is a one in the minus category. So what we should see is that they're already balanced. That means that to be balanced, I just need one of each of them. If they're already equal, you only need one of each of them. Let's go over to magnesium and fluorine. Up here, when we did magnesium and chlorine, we came up with magnesium making a two plus charge and chlorine making a one minus charge. So we're gonna carry that down here. Magnesium is gonna bring the two plus charge and chlorine is gonna bring the one minus charge. <clears throat> now in here, my numbers are not equal. So I have two in the positive category and I have one in the negative category. So in order to make that equal to each other, I need to add more to the one that is lacking. Magnesium is already larger. So that means that for every one magnesium, I'm gonna need two chlorines to make them equal. One times two is two. Two times one is two. 
So now I have an equal number of plus charges and an equal number of negative charges. So the last one we're going to look at is sodium and phosphorus. So we already said that sodium is going to bring the one plus. And then right up at the top here, we can see that phosphorus is going to bring the three minus. So again, we're looking to make them equal. That means that I base it on my larger one. So phosphorus is bigger than sodium right now. So for every one phosphorus, I'm going to need three sodium to make them match. So that's one way to think about it. The other way to think about it is something called crisscross or crossover. You can hear it both ways. And in that, I take a look at the substances together. So I say that sodium has one plus and fluorine has one minus. And then what I do is I crisscross those numbers down to the other one. That right there, the number on sodium crisscrossed down to fluorine tells me how many fluorines I'm going to need. The number on fluorine crisscrossed down to sodium tells me how many I'm going to need. That matches one and one that I already predicted based on just kind of thinking about it, thinking about it and making it equal. So let's look at our other ones. So we've got magnesium that brings the two plus, and we've got chlorine that brings the one minus. Again, if I crisscross that, two goes down to chlorine, one goes down to magnesium. Two chlorines matches what I predicted based on trying to make them equal. One magnesium matches what I predicted to try and make them equal. So this crisscross method using the charges on each of the substances can either be used to predict how many are going to be needed, but it also helps me double check if I do it the other way. If I start with just trying to make them equal, this is a way that I can double check what I get. Our last one is going to be sodium and phosphorus. So sodium, we already know, brings the one plus. Phosphorus brings the three minus. So when I crisscross, the three comes down on the sodium, the one comes down on the phosphorus. Three coming down on sodium matches what I predicted for it, and one coming down on phosphorus matches what I predicted for it. So what you're going to do is finish up these examples and then you're going to be moving on to the crisscross practice or crossover method practice as the next step in the learning path. So here what you should remember is that where we end up in terms of how many of each atom we need is all coming back from how many valence electrons they came with in the first place. How many valence electrons they have tells me what charge it's going to make. And then bringing that charge down using the crisscross method, that's going to tell me how much of each atom I need. So feel free to come back and look at this if you need to, but the next step is going to be to finish the remaining examples and then also move on to the crisscross practice, or crossover practice, I think is what it's titled. The last thing that I will say is if you end up with a situation where your numbers can be reduced, you would want to reduce them. So for example, in calcium and oxygen, I'm just going to tell you that you're going to end up with two and two. Two can go into two one time each. So since they're already equal, I would need one of each. So just watch out for anything that can be reduced. So I'll see you guys when I get back and I can answer any questions that you have then. Good luck.